I'm finally to the point in this makeover where it's time to paint the bathroom and I want to share my painting process with you guys as well as how I chose the right primer and paint for my bathroom. The first step is to properly prep your space. I'm painting over freshly skim coated walls, so I just needed to wipe away some of the excess dust that was left over from sanding. If you're repainting your bathroom, you'll want to take something like a TSP or a bleach cleaner and scrub all of the grime and soap scum off of your walls, making sure the walls are clean enough for the paint to stick and not peel off down the road. Once once the walls are dry, you want to tape off and cover all of the areas that you aren't painting. I used plastic and frog tape to cover the bathtub, then I covered the floor with a drop cloth. You'll want to tape off the trim and cover your vanity as well. I removed mine so I don't have to worry about that. Now that the bathroom is prepped, I got all of my supplies together, making sure I had everything easily accessible before getting started. The full supply list is down in the description box for you guys, and I will explain what paint and primer I went with and why as I use them. To prime the walls, I'm using a paint roller, a 3 8 inch inch nap microfiber cover, a two and a half inch angled paint brush, an extension pole, a paint tray, and a tray liner. For the primer, I went with the Kills 2 all-purpose primer sealer, which I needed since I'm priming over a skim coat that needs to be sealed. This primer also has mildew resistant properties, which is another reason I went with this one. If you are repainting, this is still a great option because it it will hide previous paint colors, blocks light to medium stains, and it promotes paint adhesion. To get started, you want to load up the paint roller, making sure that it's pretty well saturated in paint. And then when applying the primer to the ceiling, you want to roll it on in a full coat. If you are repainting your surface, then you want to make sure you're getting good coverage to completely cover any stains or old color that you're trying to get rid of. And if you're painting new drywall or a skim coat like I am, you want to apply this primer fairly firmly to make sure that you're pushing that primer through so that it fills in and seals that porous surface. Make sure that you are always working the wet edge. You want to start each section slightly overlapping the one before it so that you smooth out those lines between the sections and then back roll to distribute and smooth out the primer as you go. We have a bulkhead in our bathroom, so where that bulkhead is, I rolled the paint on the underside first, rolling it all the way to the edge, and then using the remaining paint left in the roller to paint the sides of the bulkhead. After rolling the sides all the way down to the bottom corner, I ran the roller along the bottom side one more time to catch any possible drips. When you've finished rolling the primer onto the ceiling, you can take your angled brush and go around all the edges cutting in the primer. When priming the walls, the steps are the same. You want to roll each section from the top of the wall to the bottom, rolling on a full coat and then working the wet edge, working from one side of the wall to the other. I only had the long extension pole, which was too long and it got in the way when I was painting the walls. So I just used a step ladder, but I suggest a smaller two foot pole when painting the walls, especially when you're in a tight space like this bathroom. Then once the walls are primed, you can go back in with your angled brush and cut them in. This next step is one that I used to skip, especially when painting textured walls, but now that I'm smoothing out the walls and getting rid of the popcorn ceilings, this has become one of the most important steps in getting the perfect paint finish. You want to sand in between each and every coat. I thought it sounded daunting, but it is the quickest step and it only adds a few minutes to your time. You want to use a fine grit sandpaper and a sanding pole and just run that sand 
sandpaper across the entire surface. You don't need to sand it hard, just a quick sanding and it knocks off any bumps, ridges, dried bits of paint, or any dirt that might have gotten stuck to the wet paint. It does not create any dust, you don't need to wipe the walls down or do anything else afterwards, and it makes all that work worth it when you have a flawless finish at the end. I also took a fine grit sanding block and just quickly hit all of the corners to make sure I didn't miss any spots. One more thing I would mention is that I just used the square sanding pole that I already had on hand, but the square shape tends to get snagged on the walls and skip a lot. So if this is something you're going to be doing in multiple rooms, you might look into getting a radial sander, which is probably going to be my next investment. Since I'm sealing these walls, I went ahead and repeated those first steps and I rolled on a second coat of primer. The skim coat really soaked up that first coat, so the second coat just to make sure that I have a really good base layer to bond my paint to. If you're covering a dark color or a lot of stains, a second coat might be a good idea for you as well. Otherwise, you might only need one. Once that second coat of primer dried, I went back in and sanded it all again before moving on to the paint. To paint the walls, I'm using the same supplies as I did with the primer, using a new roller cover, paint tray cover, and a clean angled brush. After looking over several options, I decided to go with Bare Marquee in the color Simply White. I'll talk more about picking the right paint for your bathroom in a minute, but I want to mention Bare's rust proof lid with its own pour spout. The lid doesn't rust, the paint is supposed to stay fresh longer, and it's really convenient to pour paint from. It's a small detail, but it's one that I really appreciate, and the Kills Primer lid is also rust-proof, just without the pour spout. Just like with the primer, I'm starting with the ceiling before moving on to the walls, but instead of rolling it on first, I'm going to cut in the paint first and then roll it on. You want to do one area at a time, trying to roll on the paint before your edges where you cut the paint in dry. This did prove to be a little tricky because this paint dried so fast, but it didn't cause any problems for me. I applied the paint to the bulkhead the same way, cutting it in first before rolling it on, using the paint that's left in the roller to paint the sides, then running the roller along the bottom edge to catch any drips. Once the ceiling was done, I moved on to the walls, cutting in each wall, then rolling on a thin coat of paint. Roll the paint on from the top to the bottom of the wall, working your way from one side of the wall to the other, always keeping a wet edge and back rolling to help distribute the paint evenly and get rid of any lines. This is a one coat coverage paint, but I prefer to do it in two thin coats instead. It'll dry faster and I feel like the end result is a more even finish with that full coverage. I had always heard that you needed to use a higher gloss finish in bathrooms, but I've discovered that that's no longer really the case. Paints are better formulated now than they used to be, giving you the option to use pretty much any finish that you want. So back to picking the right paint for your bathroom, I'll tell you why I went with the Bare Marquee paint. It has an antimicrobial mildew resistant finish, it's stain resistant, and it's supposed to be easily cleaned with soap and water. Bear does suggest using an eggshell finish in bathrooms, but I went with the matte and we'll see how it holds up over time. The matte finish is non-reflective. It's supposed to be better at hiding imperfections and make the wall appear smoother, which I wanted. There are several paint options out there that will work well in a bathroom. Just make sure you look specifically for one that has antimicrobial properties, is mildew resistant, and remember that when it comes to paint, quality does matter. This paint has a dry time of one hour and a recoat time of two. So after two hours, I went back in and gave it all a quick sanding. This is the last time I'm sanding the walls, so I'm just making sure I catch any little imperfections before rolling on the last coat. 
Then for the second coat, I'm applying it in the exact same way as the first by cutting in the edges and then going back and rolling on the paint. I have seen others only cut in the wall color before the first coat and then just rolling on the second, but I want to make sure the walls have the most even coverage possible. So cutting in that second coat before rolling it on, just make sure I don't have any of that underneath color or the primer bleeding through. When you're done with that last coat of paint, go ahead and remove the tape and uncover everything else in your bathroom. This paint will be mildew resistant once it's dry, and then after four weeks, when the paint film has cured, I can clean the walls with soap and water as needed. I'll be adding the trim, painting it, and caulking everything else in a later episode of this bathroom makeover on a budget series, so stick around if you're interested in that. And if you found this video helpful, I'd love it if you'd hit that like button to let me know, and until next time, you can check out one of my other videos linked right here.